Hello everyone, this talk is uh, about the relativity of duality. Uh, in fact, uh, it's about, I will propose a solution to the hard problem, uh, the problem of consciousness, uh, sometimes called mind-body problems or mind-brain problem. Uh, uh, despite the name, mind-body problem is refers to the mental and the physical, and the body and the mind are particular cases. Here, the mental actually includes the whole phenomenological field, so we are really talking about consciousness. When I say the physical and the mental, it really means the physical and consciousness. Uh, first, uh, we revise some proposed solutions to and their objections to that problem. Uh, the dualities proposed in each of the solution, and then we will face the destruction of the traditional concept of consciousness and the physical. The proposed new uh, framework is a result of this destruction and something about the uh, mathematical consequences of, of this new proposal. Uh, whether we are aware of it or not, all of mathematical approaches to consciousness are embedded in some philosophical framework, in some proposed solution to the hard problem. So we are always choosing uh, dualism, like for example, system dualism or property dualism, or we are choosing a monism or something that try to go beyond this uh, monism and dualism, like panpsychism. And, uh, but all these proposed solutions are philosophical framework that write serious, serious objections. Um, for example, interactionism is a problem for, for the dualism uh, because of the principle of physical causal closure. And from the dualism, it's difficult to answer the question, the whole ontologically independent substance interact for example, physicalism, we have all these problems, all these arguments, very well known, very famous, like for example, the knowledge or epistemologic argument with uh, the me uh, merry rooms, black and white rooms, and the zombies of chairmers and the better spectrum against physicalism, against uh, emergentism. For example, we have the supervenience argument and again, panpsychism, uh, we have the combination problem, and so on. So, if we seriously reflect on the philosophical consequences of mathematical models of consciousness, we will come to the conclusion that they lead to serious philosophical problems. Uh, you could declare yourself metaphysically agnostic, but it's simply postponing the, the problem. Sooner or later, you have to to answer the, the, the question of what is consciousness, of what is consciousness in relation to, to the physical world. And after four centuries, it's very difficult to provide new philosophical frameworks for the problem of consciousness. Uh, why do all the proposed solutions meet with serious objections? Uh, we have uh, all an idea, what is the consciousness, what is the physical, the different property that, for example, consciousness or the mental is private, while the physical is public, physical is quantitative, while the consciousness is qualitative. But in all cases, a traditional concept of the physical and the mental are independent of the subject. What is physical is physical, what is mental is mental independently of the subject. So, for example, one soul of this guy is a soul. Uh, for you, for me, for everyone, in principle, according to the tradition, and the same with the physical objects. Each uh, solution to the problem, to the hard problem, uh, characterizes the, the duality in different ways. For example, uh, dualism of substances, uh, we had two different substances. In the dual aspect of monism, we had two aspects, and so on. Could we characterize, uh, but in all, the, in all the solution, uh, as I said before, uh, this uh, duality is absolute in the sense that it's independent of the, of the subject. Uh, we, I will use the, the, the Heideggerian uh, concept of destruction uh, about the tradition, 
how to destroy the traditional concept of consciousness and the physical. We take for granted that what we mean when we speak on the physical and the mental. And as Heidegger says, by taking for granted what comes to us through tradition, we cease to question it. The German word destruction was used by Heidegger in the sense that philosophy should destroy some ontological concept and the everyday meanings of certain words. By assessing the original sources of this traditional concept, we can shed light on the instability of the problem. The origin of the current concept of the physical and the mental is to be found in the car, in the origin of the mind-body problem. So we have here a very famous uh, paragraph in the discourse on the method. But if you see uh, carefully, you realize that the word I I, you can find the word I a lot of times, uh, 14 times in total, and we, me, uh, or us, other forms of the first person, in total we had 21 mentioned. In another famous test, foundational text, national paragraph of, of the mind-body problem, of the problem of consciousness, we had uh, 26 mentions of the first person in only a few lines. So, remember that uh, Descartes is looking for a solid through in which to bathe his philosophical system. He finds two different types of substances. You maybe disagree with the dualism of, of Descartes, but uh, we are using this concept of the physical and the mental. I am a thinking thing, or I am a mind, appears in this paragraph. So we. Uh, we are right to the equation, what I am is what is mental. But this equation can be understood in two different ways. For me, it's the origin of the meaning of the mental, a hidden uh, meaning. If we remain hidden in the tradition, the mental is me. It's not, as the tradition says, it's not the characterization of the I as the mental. I propose that is the cover definition of the mental as what I am. What I am in this context is uh, the phenomenal consciousness, the subjective experience, the object of the heart problem. The consequence of this concealment uh, for the history of the mind-body problem is that the mental and the physical remain irreducibly opposed in spite of all the efforts of physicalism. The physical, in an even more superstitious, superstitious and hidden way, is defined in opposition to what I am, what I am, what I am not. The physical is what I perceive through the senses, uncertain in contrast with the certainty of what I am. The certainty of the mental comes from I am it, while the uncertainty of the physical comes from not being it. This irreducible opposition between what I am and what I know is the result of this uh, origin conceal. The mental-physical opposition will produce perplexity and fascination for centuries. That's the reason why we are all here today, this week. Uh, the apparent duality is a consequence of being, for me, the apparent duality is a consequence of being a concrete uh, cognitive system that is a part of a larger whole. It's difficult to conceive of a universe in which a concrete cognitive being can avoid dividing the universe between what I am and what I am not. I don't know attend here to present a scientific theory on consciousness or to elucidate what is the nature of the physical world. My intention is to reflect on the traditional use of the words consciousness, mental, and physical. I propose that tradition makes impossible to solve the problem. For example, to reduce the mental to the physical is trying to reduce what I am to what I am not. But you have to choose a subject, uh, an observer, before specifying what is physical, what is mental. These are relative concepts. What I am and what I am not only make sense 
if you choose previously one specific subject. Another analogy uh, that serves to better understand the consequences of forgetting this relativity of the duality is that of the left and right. For each concrete subject, there is a left and a right. But it makes no sense to speak of an absolute left and absolute right. What is left for you is right for me if I am in front of you, and it's easy to imagine the hard problem that would arise if we were to insist that left and right are absolute. We will ask questions such as how to re reduce the left to the right in order to avoid this annoying duality in a preferably unitary universe. We will try to explain how the right emerge from the left substratum. I'm joking, obviously. Or we will postulate that the right as a proof that there are a phenomena in nature that cannot be explained in left terms, in physical terms. What I propose is that duality itself is associated with concrete subject. The physical also is defined in relation to the concrete subject. Usually, the physical seems to be less mysterious and problematic than consciousness. This slippage from the mind-body problem to the problem on consciousness, to focusing uh, just in consciousness, makes the solution more difficult. For example, the Nagels is like to be. Consciousness is what I am, so we should change from like to be to being. What I am proposing is now a first-person perspective, is a first-person being. So, for example, in neutral monism, dual after monism, phenomenal concept strategies, as for example, the indesical strategy, uh, this apparent duality is characterized in epistemic terms, two different ways of accessing the mental and the physical. In my proposal, one doesn't access the mental or consciousness, but is the mental or consciousness? Is. Panpsychism, for example, uh, accept the traditional concept of the consciousness and the physical and simply overlapping them. If you think that what I am proposing here is uh, panpsychism, I disagree. I am trying to correct a mistake committed by conscious beings uh, who erroneously conceptualized the mental and the physical. It's a kind of prescription to be administered here to stop believing that there is a mind-body problem. It does not seem necessary to administer that prescription to galaxies, stones, electrons. In science, in analytic philosophy, references to being are avoided. This forgetfulness of being, specifically the forgetfulness of first-person being, makes consciousness into an entity. The mind, it, it makes the mind-body problem uh, unsolvable. How physical substrates and inside the tradition, inside the tradition, we usually make questions like how physical substrate generates consciousness, or we say the subject uh, kid stand with respect to the physical entity and the conscious entity, and this is wrong. Uh, in the tradition, we usually say we have con consciousness or we are conscious, and what I propose is that we are consciousness, it's what you are. In how we create the collective concept of the physical, in the tradition, we arrive to the tradition, we receive a collective uh, uh, concept of the physical that we accept uh, uh, critically. Why we do that? We forget the first person being, and as a consequence, we forget that the physical originates from what I am not. I leave out of my individual conception of the physical what I am, and is apparently covered by the individual physical of the other. This uh, collective physical is uh, is simplifying a lot, but can be seen as a union 
of the individual what I am not. So the consequence is that an appearance of completeness, nothing seems to be left out, but the collective concept of the physical is unconsciously constructed from an individual concept in which each observer excludes the mental. The result is a zombie universe, a universe not conscious, with no uh, subjective experience. This universe is not difficult to conceive. It's the universe that derives from the traditional conception of the physical. This zombie universe is the union of the what I am not, the everything without being. Something about the dialectic of the point of view, the opposition, traditional opposition between the first person and the third person point of view, but the problem is always posed uh, for a, from a first person, whether the car, Nagel, Jew, or you. Tradition takes for granted that there are two possible points of view for the same phenomenon. In fact, each of us is always have the same point of view throughout our lives. You will be always you. You can't avoid be you. It's impossible in practice to leave the object fixed and vary the point of view of subject. This is precisely how we originate the false problem. In the theory of relativity of Albert Einstein, uh, we had always a framework, reference. Uh, there's no privilege uh, or absolute point of view. The, because we don't, ha we don't have uh, absolute space and absolute time, there's no a privileged reference system. In our case, it's the third person point of view that is eliminated as the privileged point of view. Because whenever there is consciousness, there is a concrete subject. So there are only different first person point of view in my proposal. And as a consequence, uh, our equations must express the transformation that the physical and the mental undergo for two different subjects. In analogy with the Lorentz transformation, I propose here a, a transformation in where um, M means um, the mental and P the physical and M prime and P prime is for a different observer, a different first person. So all these uh, equations show how the mental and the physical for a subject A is a function of the physical and mental observer by a subject B. And all these transformations should for a group. If you want more details, you can find it in this uh, field papers uh, preprint, uh, what I am what I am not, destruction of the mind-body problem, and thank you for your attention.